Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening, caring partner. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, our guest is Wanyomo Ivuka yes. of Stayed Sports. Yes. Karibu sana. Santi sana. Tell us about Stayed Sports. What is it about? The name describes what Stayed Sports is about. It stands for Sports Tourism and Drug Education. So the acronym is what now forms the name Stayed Sports. What triggered the idea? to start uh, state sports? One is the, the background uh, one I've grown in. And more so, we can look uh, from uh, 93, when now uh, I was taken up by the sister to my mom, and she was married to this man, Charles Nderito Mokora, who happened to be the NOC chairman, National Olympic Committee of Kenya chairman. So already that's a home of sports. And uh, in that home, we used to sleep sports, wake up sports. I mean, so already the background had to one way or the other influence, you know, why I would end up with this. I remember back as well in 96, I had my niche of some physical strength when it would come to running. But of course, never defined. But the more I advanced, the more it became clear, I'm actually have good gifting towards sports. Because I would be engaged in any activity around sports and I'd quickly learn it. And if there's a challenge, I would always say bring it on. But when you take me to another field, I'm like, it is impossible. But when you take me to sports world, it felt always very possible and the challenges are very welcome. I remember actually Mrs. Mokora one time saying, you know what, yes, fine, you're not my son, my biological son, but let's put this boy in a plane and take him for the Olympics. So in 96, we went for the Centennial Olympics in the USA. So I think every step of my growth, it was supported by a lot of sports. Tell us what state sports does. State sports, we're about developmental sports. We take and develop structures through a research perspective, through a capacity perspective, and through a coaching perspective. If you are to look at an area, for example, let's say, let's look at Kibera area. If we are to launch basketball in Kibera, uh, it doesn't make real, it doesn't add up. So that's where the research element comes in. In this sense, there are more fields than basketball courts. So the resource that is readily available is soccer pitches. So now how best do we bring our expertise in that area and develop soccer to realize its true potential? So that's why for us research or sports research makes a lot of sense. Capacity building, why this is important, is we have seen a lot of young children, for example, with their team in Kibera, getting good opportunities or sponsorship. But along the way, because the character was not well developed, this person begins th taking for granted that sponsorship. So capacity development is able to help this person to begin seeing, this is actually my tool of trade, my gift in sports as my tool of trade. Then of course, now we have the coaching. Now, me as a coach, I need to understand what age and how and what level am I dealing with. Because sometimes you find there are children, by the way, it's unfortunate in this country, they don't want to do sports. And they're yet, they're actually below 17 years, you know, below 18. And you'll see a child tell you, if there's no money, I'm not coming to an event, and you're just below 17. So, you as a coach, what are you instilling in that child? So you will find the team we have in Kibera, including the professionals they interacted with, money is not their number one motivation. So again, State Sports as a company offers that accountability system, whereby coach, why didn't you deliver what's going on? What kind of sporting activities are you involved in? That is basketball and cycling and soccer. So those are the key sports that we are involved in. 
And who do you target mainly with your company? High schools, when it comes to coaching. Now, the, our areas of interest is the high schools. But, you, but also as a sporting company, you need to have your already existing product. For a high school, normally what you do is you invite, you actually do a letter and ask for a friendly. We'd like to know more about um, the operations, in, also in terms of the people that you work with, how you do engage the youth, but we'll do this after this break. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. Did you know you can now send money from M-Pesa to an equity bank account? To send money from M-Pesa to your equity bank account, go to your SIM toolkit, select M-Pesa, select Lipana M-Pesa, select Pay Bill, select Enter Business Number, enter Pay Bill Number 247247, Enter the equity bank account number. Enter amount. Enter your M-Pesa PIN and confirm the transaction. You will then receive an SMS notification that the transaction is complete. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, our guest is Wanyomo Ivuka of Stayed Sports. Wanyomo, is it possible for anyone really to create a business around sports? Yes. And again, this goes back to the perception you have towards sports. People don't look at it as a profession. It's a by the way. In fact, when you finish school, go play there, then you come do the serious thing. But uh, for me, I have a different story to that. Today, through the cycling program, uh, State Sports has. Uh, we are the official sports marketing team for a company called Kitchen. The first day that we hit the ground, I remember them saying, actually, now this thing is working. Because I think by the time we hit Mombasa Road, there were five immediate phone calls in less than 30 minutes, people ordering. Now, that's the power of sports. It's a universal language. But now when we come to sports marketing, yes, that's one income generator. There's, of course, the immediate allowances the cyclists are getting per the hour or per the day they have been assigned by the company. Why would a company consider cycling as opposed to roller skating? Yeah. Cycling has variables that you can be able to introduce in stages. One, stunts. So stance is one variable that can be introduced, and that's already an eye catcher. Speed is another. When you're branded and you move at a fast pace in a jam, and then they see that team or that peloton waiting, somebody will want to ask themselves, what is that? Already there, you've broken the ice. How do you get the team together? Where do you get these people from? There was no really genuine structure, but we were all cyclists okay. with one thing in common. Then now from that, we were able also now to develop into these other things. What would be the general rule of recruiting young people? The availability and the passion to be there to train with the team when it's training. Okay, we have to also agree to, number one, being practical. If you look at soccer, I, we can only absorb a certain number, right? If it's cycling, again, we can absorb a certain number. The same way for basketball. There's a lot of uh, opportunities around state sports, let's say in the area of social media. If, for example, we are going for a ride or for a race, we can be able to engage you. If you, le if you look at most of the cycling page, you'll be able to see a lot of activity on that area. Uh, so that's one way. If you really are not into the hardcore sport, 
so that we can be able to engage you in terms of how you're able to create the hype for the activities we do. Now that is able as well to trigger and create as well a form of employment because you find that visibility is not outside there. For example, when we had this cyclist of go to Italy, for example, no one knew about it. So if there's a parent somewhere who would have seen actually cycling is taking people outside Kenya, then you see if they are looking at cycling as a by the way, then people now would begin to look at it more seriously. What other activities uh, do you engage cycling in? Cycling also now we have a CSR part to it. Now when we are not doing that income generating kind of activity, we are able as well to bring in sports and CSR. Now in the, in the education to the public that sports can work in those familiar territories so that people can begin to, to see how, can, how else can they engage sports. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the projects we did was with the Cerebral Palsy, their charity work. And uh, here we mobilized the cyclists to be able to come and be a part of this noble cause. Because when uh, you do that, you don't know who's looking at you. And I'll be very honest, like uh, with that event, actually there's an organization that approached us and asked, can you help us organize something in Transzoia? So I might need a team of maybe 10 or four cyclists because of their planning, logistics of maybe accommodation, and the period we might be needed there in terms of mobilization. So what is happening with the team, the small team, for example, I will involve maybe in Transoya if that project happens. Yeah. Already that's employment, or that's already an opportunity for this tool of trade to actually begin creating an impact in them. As a sports business, what lessons have you learned? In as much as this is a niche market, it's a unique market. In fact, there's no competition. I can sleep and wake up and I'll still have no competition. It's still hard. Uh, it's still hard because sometimes I have to do proposals and forward and you never get Yeah, responses. that's what I was asking you. Do people you know, understand They still don't understand. As a know. business. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes I will get a proposal and align it in what you may understand. For example, I may align a proposal around, let's say, probation. For example, probation is... You can partner, for example, with prisons and go to schools and teach them on how to stay rather than end up in prison. On a bike, I can be able to do a nice tour of Kenya, going from one school to another comfortably. But you'll still find, in as much as that's a niche market and that's a put, an opportunity that you're using cyclists as ambassadors, you'll still find somebody is not really understanding it. A cycling caravan beats a roadshow truck, hands down. When you look at a team of about 20 cyclists go down here, you'll want to stop and look. You'll actually want to stop them and ask them a question. And that's a perfect tool even for campaign, for example. If you're genuinely born for sports, it's not going to be easy. You will give up, but you will need to get up. The passion in you for sports is so strong. So it will always guide you back to the path of sports. Begin surrounding yourself with people who have best intentions so that they can be able to open doors for your gift. Yeah, because the people just simply block it. They understand it, but they'll just decide to block it. So again, align yourself with people who can support and open those opportunities. Tell us, what impact do you feel you have made in our society using sports as a business? With the soccer program in Kibera, at the DC area, we had one boy who was spotted by Upper Hill. And uh, because of his quality of soccer, three more boys got full sponsorship in Upper Hill. Now those are four parents in Kibera who have been offset the burden of school fees for the next four years because of soccer. One of the directors who uh, was not sure about his last term in university, but because of uh, seeing how much budgets need to be done around sporting activities, also that pushed him towards finishing his degree.
There seems to be a very bright future when it comes to sports. What is the future for state sports? I know it will be the ideal coaching platform in this country. And I can't wait for that time. I'm getting a, a call and being told what we want your coach in our school. Thank you so much for your story. It's actually inspiring to see the passion that you have in sports and what you want to do in, around sports, especially turning it into a business. And there are very many opportunities. I think you've given a lot of young people hope that they can use their talents to create something and make an impact in our society. Thank you so much for your story once again. Thank you. Remember, champions keep playing until they get it right. Don't go away. Equity Bank has entered into partnership with Bosch to support small and medium-sized enterprises to access affordable power tools. A memorandum of understanding signed by Equity Bank and Bosch includes training Juakali Artisan on the use of the Bosch power tools. We believe it's a great opportunity for uh, two very good companies around to basically take their corresponding strengths and then work together so that we can provide to our artisans the right financing solution. As a company, Bosch provides a lot of good, uh, especially the power tool sectors around, a lot of machining tools, power tools, and and you know, to the local artisans around. And Equity is one of the largest financial services groups in East and Central Africa. We have around 10.5 million customers. Our roots are in retail and micro banking, even though we do a lot of SME and corporate banking right now. We believe that our customers can benefit quite a lot. Uh, we expect Bosch to provide us with some good homogeneous groups, using which we can actually provide them with some more financial training. Uh, as a result, our artisans will then benefit not only just from the financing aspect of it, but also, more importantly, understanding how do they manage the finances. Bosch established a present in East Africa in 2014 with the official opening of the office in Kenya. For me, being here where our power box is in Duakali, or being in Rwanda, being in other parts of East Africa, there needs to be hands-on training, and who might be, to a certain degree, be better suited for hands-on training than the people who manufacture the components or the tools. Vonji Rajakoba, Bosch Vice President of Power Tools, said Equity Bank is the perfect fit for Bosch as a partner because it serves the people at the bottom of the pyramid. When us making the decision to come to Africa, uh, we said we were coming to Africa first to understand the African user. It's impossible to understand fully the African user if you sit somewhere in Germany or somewhere else. What we found out is, indeed in Africa, there is, uh, we can extend our market share you know, on the products with the users that we already have. And that's where we started to have uh, engaged into discussions with, uh, with equity, and there was a perfect fit. Because equity has been really targeting the, uh, the people at the bottom of the pyramid, the, the unbanked, and have enabled them improving livelihoods and improving skills. That's where we decided then it makes sense not only to work together offering microfinancing to these artisans, but also to offer them um, financial literacy. The Bosch Group is a leading global supplier of technology and services in four business sectors, namely mobility solutions, industrial technology, consumer goods, energy, and building technology. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business, where our goal is to see you succeed. This week, our expert is Vincent Ogutu, who is a business coach. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you. Vincent, let's talk about sports. Our guest, Ibuka, has started this enterprise that's around sports, and he has seen a lot of success, um, which means there are opportunities everywhere when it comes to business, including sports. Yeah, opportunities are normally all over. Whether it's social, whether it is economic, there are opportunities all over. You cannot imagine that um, people growing 
three seedlings by the road in town, have a market. So sports is actually big business. It is mega, 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 mega business. And uh, since football has got a lot of following, advertisers would like to tap into that following. So they'll pay for advertisement, which is big money, promotions. Mm. Somebody like Ibuka has taken his passion of sports and turned it into an enterprise that also, that also is impacting society. It's a social enterprise, yeah, yeah that is uh, helping youths have direction, getting engaged uh, physically and socially. Because through sports, uh, sports serve as a, a means of building teams. So if you can work within a team or you can help in building teams, leadership skills come out of it. And eventually in society when a person is doing other things, those soft skills that you gain when you are engaged in sports are actually impactful to society. But it's quite impressive that he's used soccer, basketball and cycling yeah, and, and brought together young people uh, to make an impact. When you engage in sports, you are exercising. You know that uh, majority of the people now, we are so much health conscious. Uh, we have got these lifestyle diseases because of our sedentary lifestyle. We don't exercise. We don't eat healthy. So when we have opportunities like sporting, for example, these marathons that we have periodically, you engage in it and uh, you make it uh, a hobby. It helps you as an individual to get the fitness or the health that you actually require. And for the young people who can build on their skills and become very good in what they do. For example, just remember Yego, YouTube athlete. We can have so many Yegos and eventually we'll be able to get more gold medals for the country. And Kenya being a very sporty <laughs> country and very many young people sitting idle, they can use this, uh, this opportunity, they can create something out of it. I give kudos to our modern developers who when they develop the gated communities, they provide uh, areas where children can play. Others nowadays are even providing the gyms so that people can exercise. Because majority of the open spaces are now disappearing. And uh, with this new way of doing things, they are even planting trees, which is good for our environment and is good for us because it cleans the air that we do uh, breathe. And um, when they have these uh, walkways, People can exercise. How would I translate that into a business? How do, what, what should I consider? Uh, and translating that into now making money out of it. People start making money when you start having uh, tournaments. Sometimes you start attracting sponsors. How do we encourage talent for business? What I've seen and uh, what I'm observing is that any passion, whatever passion you have, you can turn it into a business. And you are able to do it without straining because you love what you are doing. You don't need any other motivation so long as you do what you are doing. If you are very good at what you are doing, the sky is the limit. And one of the things he also does is cycling as activation. Instead of using music, why not use something that's different that will attract uh, a crowd or attract business? Cycling is good because it's also good for the heart. We said that there are opportunities that surround us every day. Uh, it's really up to us to identify them and run with them. And yes. if we are passionate about something, we can actually create a business Easy. out of it. Easy. Like what uh, Ibuka has done, yeah. using sports as his passion, you know, and, and really creating a sports ecosystem that works for everyone, whether you're doing it as a sport or you're doing it for exercise or you're doing it for leisure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's always wonderful to have you on our show. Thank you. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Do have a blessed week. Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity.
Bank. You are listening.